In this screencast we're going to look at the bonding in the oxygen molecule O2 and use this to explain the fact that oxygen is paramagnetic. This means it's attracted to a magnet as a result of having unpaired electrons. We're going to use molecular orbital theory to construct a molecular orbital energy level diagram. The first step is to add the appropriate atomic orbitals. An oxygen atom has the electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. You don't need to worry about the 1s electrons. Those are in core orbitals that won't interact. So the atomic orbitals you need on the figure are the 2s and the 2p orbitals. The higher up the screen an orbital is, the higher in energy it is. The 2s orbitals interact together to form a sigma g bonding orbital and a sigma u antibonding orbital. The bonding orbital is lower in energy than the contributing atomic orbitals and the antibonding orbital is higher in energy. The 2pz orbitals interact in a similar way. This gives a sigma g bonding orbital that's stabilised with respect to the atomic orbitals and a sigma u antibonding orbital that is destabilised. The 2px and 2py orbitals interact together to give pi u bonding orbitals and pi g antibonding orbitals. Remember, the pi orbitals are always in pairs, so there are two bonding orbitals that go down in energy and two antibonding orbitals that go up in energy. Pi interactions are generally weaker than sigma interactions as they occur at 90 degrees to the other atom. This means that the pi bonding orbitals are not as low in energy as a sigma bonding orbital and the pi antibonding orbitals are not as high in energy as a sigma antibonding orbital. There are 12 electrons to put into the molecular orbitals, 6 from each oxygen atom. Filling from the bottom upwards using the Alpau principle means the orbitals are filled up until the pi antibonding orbitals, which have one electron in each, consistent with Hunt's rule. It's these unpaired electrons that give rise to the paramagnetism of O2.